Hi there, I thought I would uh, play out a game turn of this, uh, I think, very likeable system, the Musket and Sabre standard rules. There is a quick play system which has sort of um, retains some of the nuances of this system over against the old Napoleon at War Blue and Grey style system on which it sort of took its initial start, but um, uh, loses quite a lot of the, the flavour, I, I think, and I, I, I like all the nuances as in this one. So I'm going to play out a game turn uh, for, on the French side to show you some of uh, how the things work. I think what I'll do is I'll start in this quadrant and move around. It's quite simple. You have movement and then combat. So um, I will zoom in on some quadrants, but um, maybe not this one, because these guys, I think, are going to be mainly retreating. You have here, these are disrupted markers, so units that disrupted ha have a variable movement rate. Um, and um, what we have is we have a, had a sudden incursion. We're on turn six. That's the 1.30 hour of the first day out of uh, three days. So it's potentially, I think, 35 turns. And I think I sent the French too far forward. They've done quite well over here. They created a fair few casualties, and uh, um, in fact, um, all right, so I can't show you, but it's a, a fair few casualties um, by surrounding and capturing a fair number of um, Austrian uh, units up here and some French. Um, and they pushed uh, at some uh, Russian, and they pushed the Russians and Prussians way back there. Um, the uh, last turn we saw um, Russians moving in here, protected by these two rivers on either side. They're guarding the ford there. Uh, there's a ford here. Um, so there was a f some weak Prussians here, some more moving in to support them. So there's that being a heavy drive moving up here. That was two. Um, formations that could have come on here or here but elected to move into these off-map boxes and so forced the French to uh, consider uh, this quadrant as a as a threat apart from just these two a major threat indeed and uh, so um, the French decide they have to withdraw here they're going to have to withdraw now here they have got some reinforcements but they really wanted these reinforcements to reinforce here. So this is going to be a dicey battle. These ones are probably going to have to meet these two formations. Uh, and their hope was, was to finish off, sort of decimate this formation here, hopefully capture the um, headquarters before that great big puddle um, of... Uh, units come in over there in the next day in one, two, three. Um, I don't know, know exactly which hour of the day they come in, but in a five or six, I think, turns time. So um, that's the situation at this point. Now, um, a unit that is in a zone of control cannot retreat out of it unless it has a higher movement rate or um, it leaves a unit behind. This one has a movement rate of four, this one's two. Let's actually zoom in on there while I... a bit, while I focus on that. Um, so we're trying to, we've got uh, artillery in the second line there. They can um, bombard over the front line. But really we need some infantry supports as well. And as you can see with all these, these are French disruptions and they have a thin line there. They do have, they were hoping to protect themselves along the um, the river. The Russians are threatening to sort of come around the flank. So I think we'll have to fall back to this line. Uh, but these, I think, are going to have to hold where they are. Okay, one heels go there. In the hope that these disrupted fellows can move through them. So I'm going to keep that. Those are strong cavalry. I don't really like using cavalry to block holes. I have, I've only used them for one or two charges so far. But that's, that's really what we want to use them for. Um, 
Uh, it's fortunate that the Russian cavalry wasn't able to get out and charge these disrupted units. They'd be quite handy against them, I think. Uh, okay, so I'm going to keep this line. Um, I'm going to move this unit into here so he can move back. One, two, three. He'll go here. We'll move him forwards. If a unit is, say, two hexes away, um, or, or with a, inter, a friendly unit intervening from an enemy, they can potentially take replacements, and this one needs to, it's lost a step. Um, but it can't take it this turn because it moved. Um, so I'm, I'm retaining this line. I'll shift these here because the weight of the Russian attack is here. These are just really skirmishing units here. In fact, I'll move the hem there like that. And artillery can move and fire. We don't have a great movement rate though. Put them there. Okay. Um, and this cavalry is not moving, so it can automatically recover from its disruption. Uh, these ones I want to move, so I get, he's infantry, I believe. So what I do is I roll his movement. His movement rate is, is potentially four. I rolled three, so he gets one, two, three. If I roll higher, I don't get higher. He just moves what he gets. So he's got some protection. This fellow likewise. I only rolled one for him, so he just goes here. This fellow cannot because he is he's he he's gonna trigger these ones will trigger an attack, so he'll be triggered to attack. The same for this fellow as well. So they are in big trouble there. Um Okay, and he's triggered to attack. Uh, I'll move this artillery to support his attack. Okay, so if you, what I mean by triggers, if you're adjacent to an enemy unit, that triggers you to attack them. Now what this means is either you do attack them or one of your other fellows attacks them. Now some, you, someone could attack them by skirmishing them from two hexes away. Or they get a fortune of war. So it depends how you place. So I've done that sector. Now here, um, French try to surround and capture these fellows. And I think they have to finish that off. Hoping that they can get back and deal with those in time. So simply moving here. And then here to do the classic surround. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> I'm pointing down here. So um, the classic surround by combat that's uh, uh, surrounded by zones of control type thing um okay i'll zoom back out so you can see what i'm doing so these fellows the zones of control they form a thin cordon here sort of forcing them up that way because this is the weaker one rather than across here um, to give these time to move up because if these bring their zones of control close they won't be able to get a march move if you, you don't enter if what your zone of control does not enter an opponent's zone of control you can march move so they'll remain there um they're in zones the, the river uh, negates zones of controls because it's impassable but uh, uh stream around here Forward there makes it as a control, so he would have to attack him. Um, but he has a higher movement rate, he's going to withdraw. So he still has to roll, and he gets four win points. That's fine, he only wants to take one. These aren't really a threat. Um, but 
but put to combined against the weak force there they would be I think one two three in a river so that holds that line and then one two three don't want to go in the range of the artillery there. One, two, three. Wow, that artillery has a movement rate of six. And these young guys have a movement rate of five, which is fantastic. So they can um, bombard and um, skirmish those. And now over here, we're not really in the position for the coup de grace. We're still moving up units. And that, well, that's, that's actually quite a strong line there on a the river. Um, so we want to dislodge them from that, essentially. Um, and wait for these units to move up before I really engage in attack. So I think we need to take out, trying to come around here. So these ones are committed to attack. This one can move out. One, two, three, so as to retain, regain its, oops, I should roll for that. Yeah, okay, so as to regain its step. Okay, these cavalry are holding back. So I got a line there, just to screen. One, two, three, four. There's a little unit here. One, two, three. It's running through the woods. Uh, and actually, we will borrow some of this cavalry. One, two, three, four, five. If we were two hexes close, we could charge them, but they're not. So we're going to wait there threatening a charge, hope they will move back if they don't from the combat here. One, two, three. Okay, moving a stronger unit in place there. One, two, three, four. So just addressing my lines. One, two, three, four. Ah, he's going to take a replacement. So the French have two replacements a turn and one every other turn for cavalry. So I've done their two infantry replacements this turn. Um, and now these ones, they will have a move of nine hexes. One, two, three, four, five, six. As long as their zone of control doesn't enter an enemy zone of control, that's as close as they can get. So we're sort of going to move the weight around to here, is the thought. Okay, getting some charges ready. Here's Murat and his cavalry. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, they can't get their a march move because of the zones of controls here. So they only get eight. I think that would be to there. I have yet to have used the Legion Combat. I'm about um, to be nervous about losing them. And these ones can move down swiftly. I'm leaving up the for ninth formation there. Um... There's a swamp here, so they're getting in a defensive positions. Let's say here, so it's a bit difficult. 
So they got some of the fifth waiting there. No, let's bring them down because we want to attack. We have to sooner or later. Okay. I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. Let's bring Napoleon in, looking ominous. And first formation. It's good to keep your formations together because um, then they can combine in stacks um, to attack units. Otherwise, you can't do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, now we've got the 11th here. Uh, these fellows, they either have to come over to Ford here, or they're stuck. There's nowhere else for them to go. So if I block that Ford, uh, scuppered. Um, Do that. But not a very strong force. That's it. What can I bring on from here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Couldn't quite make it. But you could provide backup. So we'll do that. Had a quick doubt whether it's eight or nine movement points for March movement for infantry and artillery. I think it's nine. Um, okay. Uh, I'm undecided whether to bring them here or here. I don't really want to split them. Assume this holds back. Maybe they can move down here, decimate these, and then move back. Okay, that's the hope. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four. I don't know why he fell off the road. Um, no, the one cavalry unit, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You can go there just. He's very weak. I'll bring him around here just for backup. One. Okay, so that's all the movement. Now we go to the combat. So this fellow is obligated to combat or I offer a fortune or war to the enemy. Now, um, if you are disrupted, I don't think you can fight. 
Okay, it's half an attacking, but it, and it can't open it, enter an enemy's inner control, but it's already in one and it had to fight both of those. It could only fight one. So it's going to fight this one. Well, it's halved again because it's attacking out of a river. That would give it a one because if you're halved twice, you go down to a one. It's going to give one fortune of war anyway. Uh, so, okay, it's going to attack this one, but it's going to be a disengagement attack. Now, um, I've done a handy dandy thing. You see here the combat results table. You can see it's standard. Then I, I've annotated it to try and show because you can have disengage attacks, skirmish attacks, charge attacks, cat attacks. Get off! <laughs> Did you see the cat? <laughs> Do that. Okay. Um, and they all, the others all change some of the combat results. So I have Tana. So, um, for example, a skirmish attack. It's no effect all in this area. A defender retreat in this area, and the defender checks morale. If it fails, it retreats in this area. For charging, you only have two results. Essentially, it's attack a step or dis retreat and disruption, or the uh, defender checks morale. If they fail, they rout. If they don't, then it's attack a step loss or retreat and disruption, the attacker's choice. So in a charge, you either take a step loss or you have to retreat and disrupt, both quite bad, or you will rout the defender. Very nice to have that option. But you can see, trying to figure that out by converting all of these uh, all D results into DMX uh, is a bit of a nodule sprain, so I got this. Anyway, so we're on a disengage, so what we have is one against two, so the differential is, is minus one. So uh, any role in there, it will be the defender retreats. Um, any role in this area, the defender retreats, and otherwise the attacker will retreat. So at minus one, and I'm the attacker, so I, 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 I'm hoping to disengage myself. I get a five, so that is attacker disengaging. And you can both choose disengage. Um, so yes, yeah, so sorry, just to clarify, as the attacker, I was hoping to get an attacker um, retreat for my disengagement. If I've been, if the defender had chosen disengaged, then he would have disengaged. If he doesn't, then I have to check um, this table for the actual result, which would be attacker step loss, attacker retreat anyway. Uh, well, no, in fact, I've fit factored that in, so attacker step losses. Um, so that was my option. And I actually got a retreat result, so I can retreat up to three hexes. One, two, and three, I'll do it into there with my other friendly disruptive fellow. And yes, as a defender, you do get to advance after combat if the attacker um, retreats, and you can advance into an adjacent hex, which I've, I've done there, not into a, just the defender's hex. So there's lots of these interesting wrinkles in this system. So we've got another one here. Again, I'm going to choose... Um, Retreat or disengage. The attacker's not choosing disengage. I mean, the defender's not. One, two, three, four, five, six. The defender's only choice is either to choose disengage or if they have cavalry, they can choose a counter attack, a counter charge. So I'm two against six, the differential of minus four. And I roll three. So Minus four, I'm going to uh, roll three, I'm going to have to check here. Minus four, three, attack or retreat. I missed that. <laughs> I missed that on my table. Okay, so there's actually even more chances for retreating in the disengage than I had indicated for the attack. Okay. And they're not going to advance on that. So here I have to attack and it's going to be six, seven, eight against six. 
I'm not going to retreat, I'm just going to risk it. And I rolled a two. Minus two, two is a circle retreat anyway. I'm just going to retreat. No, I don't want to retreat into that bend of the river. Ah, I forgot the, I had the artillery behind that, which was going to bring it up to a zero differential. How's that going to still tackle retreat? Oh well, so I can go back into that hex. And that time they do elect to advance. Not really necessary because the thing is they move next, but in this situation. So that's that. Then we go to the old classic surrounded. So um, there's no point in them choosing retreat because if they try to retreat through these zones of control, so they're going to have to roll. Uh, on their morale and um, if if it fails at check it routes and as they as you route you, you become disrupted and if you go through another enemy zone of control you can get routed off the map eligible to come back two turns later but still um, Oh, and I forgot, it's, uh, an, uh, no, it's an even number turn, okay. So we got straight 18, 19, 24 versus 11. So that's going to be on the plus 10 or more. It's not going to be good for the Austrians. They're going to elect to disengage anyway. They're just trying to skedaddle out of that. So the defenders disengaging this time. I rolled a six, they have no chance. And DM, DX, and ammo. So I don't have any artillery in there. So the defender makes a morale check. They roll five for their lead unit, which is too much. They miss their morale check, which means they do rout anyway. So they're going to be writing down here, but as they go through this zone of control, every unit has to make the morale check, or else it will be removed from the map and placed two turns later on the turn track. Two of them made it. They all made it. So then they go one, two, three. And against a route, the, your opponent can move two. So they're going to move to uh, that way. Okay. Then uh, here we're just going to have some skirmishing supported by bombard. So you use the movement rate to skirmish. So that's seven against five, six, seven, eight. So that's plus one. And it's either going to result in them retreating or not, which is pretty useless <laughs> because I haven't got anything, anyone to back it up. Never mind, I rolled a four. And on a plus one, on a four, that's the defender check. They didn't make it, so they have to retreat. It would be useful if they were a battalion or an artillery because then they would be flipped on retreat and they'd have to take a turn to recover their effectiveness. Um, okay, if I get a fortune of war, I could potentially whiz a unit quickly get a free move for one of my units. So that might not be completely wasted. Here I am against artillery. So it's five against Okay, so this is where we are. Five, uh, they use their, d their defense factor rather than their movement, the artillery against skirmishing. So plus two, they rolled a two. That's a check. And they fail the morale check, so they do retreat and they have to flip. When they do that, I'll put them in the town, I think. Okay. So.
moving over here. Um, we've got some skirmishing going on here, so that's five plus the artillery, five, six, seven against six, so that's plus one. I rolled a four, so they check and they survive, so there's no result there. Um, moving up so here it's effective because these are um, just battalions I think you saw those before and not actual brigades so they are flipped into an ineffective side um, so we got four but there's two of them there against seven so I'm not likely to do anything minus three on a six have effect no there's no effect uh, Nothing gained here, and now we have to have an attack up here. So that's six against one on that battalion. He's going to choose to disengage. I rolled a five. So plus four on a five. Defender. Is out of luck. He has to make a morale check. He missed it, so he's going to route. One, two, three, and he's disrupted. I can advance, and I think I will, because I want them to fight. I want to sort of pin them for combat. We're going to press around here as soon as possible as the French. And then here we have got potentially you could counter-attack with these cavalry. As you saw, it's quite risky there. I would be on um, cavalry have a normal combat strength. This one has normal combat strength of one, morale of three, movement of six. Um, some cavalry have movement of eight. These are heavy cavalry. That they have their C charge number is heavier is higher than their standard combat factor. So you, if you charge with them, let's... So these are only one step. So if they take a step loss, they're gone. Uh, it's not crucial at the moment. They're going to disengage. And he would be at, he would be at minus one. No, he would be at equal. It would be 50-50 whether they're successful or not So with the charge. So no, they're just going to use their standard combat factor. So that's three, four against three. So that's on the disengage. No effect for the disengage. Plus one, I rolled a six. Defend retreat anyway, as it happened. Um, So they're going to retreat to, they don't want to have to fight back in their turn. And this one here, uh, we're in the woods. We're both in the woods, so it's the same. So we have plus three, six. So he's Morale check, he writes two, three, and he's flipped. Because I forgot to flip this fellow, because they're battalions, they're going to flip. If they retreat, they'll write. Okay, and that is it, that's the combat, and um, that is it for the French for that turn. So. I hope, oh sorry about the lack of focus, I hope that gives you some idea of how the game plays out, sort of tactics you can use. I think maybe when I have a closer and sort of more um, involved combat, you know, say if those two lines or those two lines became completely engaged, I will show that. Otherwise, maybe I'll just show you the end of the game. Uh, and then perhaps a sort of kind of like a review of my thoughts in another video.